Hey there, today on Jeep Sheep TV, we're gonna learn how to install a 12 volt outlet. Hmm. All right. This, uh, rubber seal. Don't forget this, you need these. And a star pattern. Okay, so today we're gonna to work just a little bit backwards. We're gonna start with the outlet and the mount I built for it. Then we're gonna to go to wiring it and then we're going to go to powering it. This right here, I bent out of a thin piece of sheet metal. I can try to give you a diagram for what it looked like when it was flat, but essentially I just made a little box. And I've got myself a spot right here for the screw. I'll show you where this mounts in just a moment. And I got a nice opening here. And that opening is just wide enough to fit my outlet. Now, the nice thing about these outlets is your ground can be anywhere on the vehicle because your car body is a universal ground. And so what I've got going on here is I've got a wire coming out of the outlet and going straight to the bracket. And that's my ground, that's it. That's all the wire I need to run. All right, the reason why I have this so it comes out is because this bolt here is actually for my seat. This is one of my seat mounts. What I want is I want my passengers to be able to have an outlet right down here so they can plug stuff in. They're not draping wires across this shared space right here. I'm going to go ahead and install this and then we're going to get to wiring this bad boy. Alright, nice and tight. Now you're going to want to make sure that there's a lot of interference between the screw and the mount that you created. Mine, it actually goes in there and touches those threads and it has to thread through the mount to get in. The reason why that's important is to create a nice, good ground to your body. Now I've got my little outlet. I chose one that is waterproof. It's got a nice cover here because you'll notice that this is low on the Jeep. There's a high possibility this is gonna get wet at some point, so you're gonna wanna make sure it's nice and sealed up. All right, we're gonna get in there nice and close so you can see what just went down. So as I said, there's my bolt, which goes into the body. Here's my ground, which goes into the mount, and also goes into the back of this guy here. You can see this screw, which cinches up real tight. I got a seal that opens up just like that. The question you're gonna have is, how do I get power to this guy? Well, the answer is through a wire, dummy. Okay, so this wire here, not just gonna mend itself to that. You're gonna have to put some kind of crimp connector like you have over here. So why don't we walk through how to do that? First, you're gonna start by exposing the copper inside the wire. And you do that, a pair of wire strippers. Now this is a 16 gauge wire. So you're gonna wanna turn your dial or however your wire strippers work and you're gonna wanna use the 16 setting. Now I've got a decent amount already out here, but I'm going to want just a little tiny bit more. Go ahead and pull that bad boy off of there and throw it in the trash. Next, you're going to want your crimp connectors. Go in here and you want to select your size. This is the size that I'm going to use because it's all I've got left. Now a little trick that I use is I'll go in here and I'll twist the wire. Just that way it's all in one place and I actually bend the end of it. So it's a little bit thicker there and it's gonna be nice and tight inside of this crimp. There you go. Now you can see it's a little tab in this one. It doesn't really matter. You get it just past where those crimps are, wires in there, and now you're ready to crimp it. I use a set of crimpers that look like this. They've got two settings, small and large. This one actually just barely qualifies as a large. So you're gonna put it in here with the bead facing the side that's going to crimp down. So rounded edge back here goes on the back of it. The bead goes on the front. I want to center it on there real nice and give her a good squeeze. Good squeeze. Just like that. And then I like to go and 
crimp the plastic down so it's grabbing the insulator and you get a nice tight connection. Now, as I said before, this is going to be somewhere where water might be able to get to it. So we're going to want to protect this from shorting out on any ground surface, which, as we discussed earlier, is all around you in a car. So we're going to use some heat shrink around the edge of this to protect it from shorting out. If you don't already have one of these, get one of these. Having heat shrink is probably the best thing you can do if you're doing any kind of wiring. You'll see me and my buddy on the Bread to Loaf channel, we're going to be using it a lot because we stand behind it. Heat shrink is a good thing. So get some heat shrink that's going to fit on there fairly snug, but you can still get it on there. Just like that. And I pull it right up to the edge right there because I want that to cover. I don't want any shorts. Now I've gone out and I've bought myself a little Dremel butane soldering iron slash heat gun. If you don't have one of these, I'll give you a little secret. A lighter works just fine for this. But this is a lot better. All right, there you go. That's all shrunk up. Now you see it's covering the edge there. You can just power right through that. You'll be just fine. All right, now we're going to go ahead and put our insulated end on here just like this. All right, the next important thing is cleanliness. If you can see the wire, you're doing it wrong. So we're gonna route this wire in such a way that you won't be able to see it when we're all said and done. First off, if you're like me and you're doing this on a Jeep Wrangler, they gave you these little tie downs, which are super useful. This one down here and this one here were originally used for my seat belt alarm, which I disabled a long time ago because it was annoying. But you just bend them up, stick it in there, fold them down, and that's it. Now you'll see here I have wire loom on here. Wire loom is crucial for protecting your wire and just making a lot of things look a lot nicer. I ran out down there, we'll see if I can find some more. Now like I said, making it disappear is the name of the game. So what you're gonna notice, this guy comes along here, on top of this area here is a center console, and on top of here is the driver's seat, which I have taken out for different reasons. And you'll see it's going to be all nice and covered. If you don't have enough wire loom, get some more. Make it nice. Be proud of your creations. There you go. Look at that. Coming up there. All the way covered up. Now you're wondering, how do I get power to this guy? Well, first I'm going to show you where I routed him. We come down here. Woo! This real little red guy here is another one of those bendy tabs. Boom! Bendy tab, and you got this right here. This is a main loom installed in the Jeep, which brings power from the front of the car to the back of the car. You got three of these. One. Oh, let's just go. Two. And three down here. Then, like I said before, use the loom as much as you can. We're going up, and we're hiding in there. Now this goes for just about any car. Under your dashboard, it's highly likely that you've got one of these bad boys, fuse panel. Now, something that I have found to be incredibly useful are these up in here. Let me grab that for you. All right, you ready for this? These guys are called Add a Fuse Tap Piggyback Blade Holder. E what? Yeah, okay, so what this does is this goes in to your fuse panel here. And this first fuse is essentially what that fuse was. So this is going to operate as normal, which just goes in here, goes through the fuse, goes out, done. The second one goes to this wire over here for you to add on whatever you want. So what I did is I chose something that is on only when the car is on. Because what this outlet's primarily going to be used for is a heated blanket. And if the heated blanket is accidentally left on, I don't want any chance of it draining my battery. So it doesn't even work in accessories. This is only with the engine running. And the heated blanket has a rating of 10 amps, hence the 10 amp fuse. Now previously, this line held a 20 amp fuse. And the line is for an option that my Jeep doesn't have. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be using that line for something else later. Give that 10 amps, this one 10 amps, for a grand total of 20. That's me being safe and making sure I'm not frying any wires that are undersized for loads exceeding 20 amps. 
your fuse in here, you got your wire. Now what I did is I went in and I soldered that bad boy and I put, you guessed it, heat shrink on there. And there's our friendly blue wire that we recognized from earlier going straight over to our outlet. It's really that easy, folks. You run a wire, you stick it in your fuse block, you send the wire to your outlet, you give yourself a solid ground, and you are good to go. Now, what's really good practice is to label your wires. I learned this trick from an ambulance that my friend and I were rebuilding, and we noticed that every wire had a number at the beginning and at the end of the wire. And that all led to a key which allowed you to know right away which wires were which, what they ran to, how much current was going through them, when they're on, when they're off. All of that information was in there. So if you're putting in your own circuit, you might as well start off right. Get yourself a label maker or create a label somehow and start giving yourself labels with the wires. Draw yourself a simple wiring diagram, which I will post mine on the screen momentarily. and keep those labels going, put it in a safe place so you don't lose it. All right, I've pulled back the loom so you can see the label I put on there. This guy's number 15. And if we go to the other end of the wire there, you'll see that it's number 15. So now I've got continuity. If I see 15 here and I see 15 down there, I know that these guys are the same wire. And you'll notice under my dashboard, I have labels all over. All right, I've got the car's ignition turned on. Let's go ahead and take a look. Oh yeah, check that out. That's illuminated so that way you're able to find it if you're in the dark, pop the cap off and you can kind of guide yourself into the outlet. It's super easy. It's really rewarding when you get it done. And of course, now you have another outlet. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. If you want to be notified of more videos that I make, hit the little bell next to it. In the meantime, I'll see you guys on the trail.